Hey, I'm Jen Posick, the Ads Maven. I work with seven figure coaches as an ads manager. And now more than ever, you really need to have both list building and ads for your launch event. What kind of ad spend are you dealing with as an ads manager? Like what are these clients of yours spending every day? Totally varies. I recommend at least a minimum budget of a thousand a month. If it's list building, I recommend a thousand a month on list building. So that's getting started at basically 30 a day. With that, you're not able to do a whole lot of testing, but that's okay. It just means testing is slower and it just can take a little bit longer. Can you talk a little bit about why the these ads really help us have successful launches? I mean, ultimately it's like, if you are doing everything organically, awesome. I think organic strategies go hand in hand with paid strategies, but it's like eventually you run out of your audience. Like you're only going to reach people so, so many ways, so many times. And so when you are running ads, you're literally just extending your reach of people. And so anytime that you have a launch, and I do suggest at least a minimum of like a thousand on your launch ads as well. Okay. And when I'm talking about launch ads, I mostly mean like your launch event. So webinars, workshops, challenges, stuff like that. Sometimes I will have clients that I'll launch by just like literally opening the doors and letting people know like, hey, here's like program is open. But with Facebook and Instagram ads, the most successful ads tend to be when they're to an actual launch event. Okay. So with that, it's just reaching people a whole nother way. And it's really focused on your warm audience. So your warm audience, when it comes to Facebook and Instagram ads, that's going to be your email list. It's going to be anybody who's visited your website in the last 180 days. It's also going to be anybody who's engaged with you on Facebook or Instagram in the last year. And then Facebook also made it so that you can add anybody who has followed your Facebook page. They have not yet added the Instagram page. Maybe by the time you're listening to this, they will have. Yeah, my Instagram has officially surpassed my Facebook page. Truth be told, I am running ads. It has helped me grow my email list profoundly. And I have so many clients and friends who are scared to do it. And I get it. Like first launch, they're kind of figuring it out. They're vetting their offer. They're validating their idea. And then when it comes to second and third launches, I still see them scared. I mean, it's very daunting to do. I don't know. What kind of suggestions do you have there? I kind of agree in that like the first launch, like figure it out, make sure that it works because Facebook ads will not fix a broken funnel. Like if your funnel is not converting and like by not converting, like people are just not signing up for your, like your launch event, people are just not interested or literally pieces of it are broken and not delivering. I see that happen way too often as well. Like get that stuff fixed, get that working, make sure everything is good to go there. And then it really does make sense to put some money behind it for ads. However, if you're doing it yourself, I absolutely suggest going through a course that can walk you step by step through how to do it. And if you can afford to, I think it's absolutely a worthwhile investment to work with somebody to either run the ads for you or to work with you to show you how to run the ads. I get a lot of e-commerce ads. Like, How is that different than launch ads? With launch ads, so it's really two things. It's ads that are running to your lead magnet. So a freebie that you're giving your information for. Typically you want it to be a quick win, easily consumable, like five to 10 minutes. And so some type of a guide, checklist, cheat sheet, a quiz, something like that, you're typically giving that away for free. Ads to grow your list and then you're selling in the list once somebody is signed up in your email welcome series, right? So ads for that work really well to start warming people up so that you've got more people to be able to launch to, to be able to promote to. Plus, hopefully you're making some sales right away. Then when you are launching your events, if it's a live event, I like those ads to run two weeks before the event. That gives you enough time to really be able to test in that first week and then really scale up in the second week. Where it's just ads, the whole point is to get them to sign up for your event. So sending them to the landing page of that workshop, of that challenge. And then of course, tracking it so that on the thank you page, and this is one of the things that I see a lot of people 
have issues with is with the tracking and Facebook pixels and now conversions API as well. So on that thank you page, you want to make sure that you have that standard event pixel where it's tracking and correctly tracking when somebody signs up as a lead or signs up uh, as a complete registration for that workshop, that, that challenge. How would you get started today? Because there's such a discrepancy between, you know, ads managers with all the experience and the new guy. I think list building is probably the easiest way to get started. It's not so like stressful as launch ads because like with list building, it's ongoing. They're always growing their list. And once it's running, I suggest getting them running for $30 a day. So that's like 900 a month, right? Mm -hmm. And if your client has less money to spend on it, you can start off at that 30 a day. Once the ads are up and running and doing a good job and they're active, you can scale down when you're scaling up or down 20% of the daily budget at a time. Don't just like cut it in half because the algorithm will freak out and the ads can often just like totally stop working. I wanted to talk a little bit about the landing pages because I mean, I teach this inside the Unicorn Digital Marketing Assistant School to start helping with these funnels and it naturally lends its way to like getting help with ads. And here's the thing, if your ad doesn't match your landing page, you're gonna have that attrition. You're gonna have people falling through. If your messaging doesn't match, it's not always the ads manager's fault, which is why this work is so freaking hard and just not easy to run into. So can you talk a little bit about these mistakes that you see? Yeah, absolutely. So I do have a freebie that goes over like the top three mistakes that I see on landing pages that they take only a few minutes to fix. And when you do, you see an increase in the conversion rate. So a few things with landing pages, you want them to be very simple. So sometimes a landing page will work with really just like the header section. So it's like, a nice image on like the background and then like free guide, title of the guide, click here to sign up. If they don't need a lot of extra information that can work really well and get you a really good cost. In general, I like the landing pages to have kind of like three sections. So header section where you've got call to action up there. What is it? Like again, so that like free guide, free quiz, free whatever, what's the title of it? and like maybe like subtitle of it, and then link to sign up. The next section, I like to kind of go into the benefits. Sometimes I'll make it very simple of like, when you download this free guide, here's what you'll discover. And it's like three bullet points, but sometimes I'll like really draw that out. And the copy on the landing page, sometimes it's like almost identical to what my ad copy is. Like you want it to be very similar so that it is kind of like drawing them in. Start off with some type of a question or statement designed to like get them engaged. Talk a little bit about who you are, who you help, and then what you're giving, the benefits of what you're giving, and then end with that call to action. And then the third section, I like to have a little bio about who you are. So I love that you have that freebie for us because it will help us get better opt-in rates, conversion rates, and can we grab that freebie? Oh yeah. So you can get it at jenposick.com slash skyrocket. If you want to learn Jen's tips for fixing your landing pages so your ads convert better, grab it in the link below. And that this is just a great place to start. Do you have any tips on what images are working well right now or what we okay. should do? So in general, I think you test it. For a lead magnet, I don't think you always need a video. For so long, like video was like the supreme thing. You know, it's like you always had to have video and it worked so well. Recently, amongst several of my clients, I've been seeing graphics work better than video, but it's like, you just have to test it and see what works best for your clients. And if they're doing a video, the video is gonna be very similar to the ad copy, like straight to camera, talking about almost the exact same as the ad copy. So what you were saying with like pulling copy from the landing page, I do the same thing. I also pull copy from videos as well, because I want it to be in their voice as much as possible. That's a good tip. And I'm so surprised about video. And I know for years it was what worked, but you would think it would make sense now with the way reels are in video marketing, because it's huge. But my clients that I've set up video for, we always end up killing those ones first. Like they're not converting, but it's like the stupid, simple graphic texts are what I've seen working. But here's the thing, like you really have to test it. Like the ones that are kind of like my go-to is that simple graphic text, like an image of you or like, your positive end result with like text of what it is, like free guide, title of guide, right? 
square image. And if you are using Canva, which I think most people are at this point, Canva has not updated the Facebook ad size in years. And so you just want to do Instagram post size because you want it to be a square image. Sometimes like literally just putting the text on the graphics works really well, like just big text for them to read. Weirdly, the color yellow still works as like a attention grabber. Like this is where you just have to to test. Yeah. And I think that is the big lesson to walk away from. And that can be hard. That can be very hard in the marketing work that we do because we we can't guarantee our clients results. We can only uh, promise to pay attention to trends and report what we're seeing. 